Hello, geeks and gamers. It's JJ here, and welcome to another Starfinder video. Today, we are going to take a look at the Starfinder 2nd Edition Starfinder Field Test number two and see what Paizo has been cooking up as they work on the 2nd Edition for Starfinder. But before we dive into that, allow me to take a moment to show you how you can show us your support. Please consider supporting us on our mission to bring guilt-free gaming to the tabletop community by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and possibly even becoming a channel member for access to exclusive videos, Geeks and Gamers tabletop emojis, and more. If you found this video particularly helpful, please consider leaving us a tip using the Super Thanks feature located next to the like buttons at the bottom of the video. Alright Geeks and Gamers, let's go ahead and jump into the Starfinder 2nd Edition Starfinder Field Test. Number two, so in their first little area, they have the moving forward, and this kind of just talks about their process the last couple months as they delve into Starfinder 2nd Edition. They go through and mention how, you know, Starfinder is going to be a science fantasy setting. It's just not futuristic lasers, fancy starships, there's going to be a lots of magical elements which I personally think that they could have done better in Starfinder First Edition. It was this very clear, we're not really sure what to do with this magic, futuristic tech hybrid. And I feel like anybody who loves playing a spellcaster felt like they didn't have a lot. Spells are great, but that was pretty much it. So hopefully they expand on that. I like that idea. As somebody who generally plays spellcasters, I want a sci-fi techie mage. I think that'd be a lot of fun. And, you know, they go to mention how they want Starfinder 2nd Edition, Pathfinder 2nd Edition to be two independent games, but you have the ability to plug and play the things you liked about both of those games into each other, since they will have kind of the overall mechanical system will be the same, which again, I think it's great. I think it creates so much story, and I think it'd be a lot of fun. And, you know, they kind of mention some changes they want to make and how Starfinder inherently is more of a ranged game, you know, laser guns and stuff like that, and how they want to kind of lean into that a bit and allow all classes and all players to be good at that kind of more ranged like combat along with whatever else the class offers which I think is a really good way to look at it field test number two kind of dives into what this field test will have which is the mystic class and I'm super excited again I like the mystic I like the spell casters from Starfighter Precision but I don't want to play them Again, as somebody who normally plays a wizard, only plays a caster of some kind, I didn't want to play a caster in first edition of Starfinder. And so reading through this, this kind of excites me to play a caster in the upcoming second edition. And, you know, they even mention it here. They want to get away from Space Fighter or Space Rogue and have what we've seen the soldier be the soldier or now the mystic, be the mystic, having defining abilities that make it different from what we think a space sorcerer would be, which is where they sort of lost me in first edition. They kind of do an overview of what we'll see here, but let's go ahead and dive into the mystic. Already looking super cool, very kind of crazy base mage. Chick chick. <laughs> All right, the mystic, you are more than just a healer. You are a conduit channeling the innate fundamental forces that connect and bind all things together. You tap into the power and bond with your closest allies. You use a diverse suite of spells to empower your bonded allies, restore their vitality and punish those who threaten them. By maintaining and nourishing your bonds, you culture a cache of vital life energy and call upon power your magic. That sounds really cool. 
wisdom based spell casting, which is cool. All the basics of that second edition character creation and format we have here. And then you know, we have the first five classes. Jump in here. And right off the bat, we have kind of the first class feature, which is connection. And this is explaining how your mystic gets their powers. Two types of connections at the moment. We have healing, which is manipulating the history of life force that connects all things. And rhythm, the cosmic melody that moves all observable things in the universe. That's really cool for flavor. So you are either connecting more intimately to life force or on a grander scale, the energies of the cosmos, which is really cool. Mystic Bond. Use your connection to form a bond between yourself and others. Forming bonds is an experience that varies from mystic to mystic. Using a 10-minute activity related to the mystic's connection. No healing. You can maintain a bond with up to 10 other willing creatures, and that bond lasts until you or the bonded creature are no, will no longer willing to be part of the bond. You are considered your bond. You know... The general distance and directions towards their bonded creatures in any conditions of that is awesome that right there makes me want to play a mystic this is no okay, connecting to either the life force or the cosmos itself like you are directly connecting your life with 10 other people i feel like that's a lot of people but it's still a really cool ability to be like if the party gets split up for whatever reason or you're playing a game where you have some very important NPCs you'll know when they're in trouble you'll know the idea of where they are at all times and maybe interact with them from great distance but we'll see how that is out but I like that ability it's really really cool it helps also kind of curve that metagame where you know you're not really supposed to know somebody might be affected by a disease or poison but when we're having roles we kind of assume and make assumptions this sort of just says yeah it's affected by something that that's kind of nice as like a gm a, a way to look at that like oh this is an in-game way for my characters to kind of know that each other are in trouble without having to be do something weird about it. Vitality Network. Your soul supports a network of vitality energy that connects those in your bond. Uh, your vitality network has a maximum capacity equal to 6 plus 4 hit points per level you have. Transfer vitality action. You take, uh, take hit points out of your network and into yourself or allies as healing. Pretty powerful. Um, let's see. Life or death situations help strengthen your bond with your allies. At the start of each turn in combat, you regain actions. Your vitality network gains four hit points. You are a master in your connection skill. You gain six. You are legendary. Eight. Your vitality network regains its full capacity of hit points when you use the refocus action. Then the transfer vitality. You can transfer any number of hit points your vitality network to yourself or a bonded creature you see. Some of these mystic bond things, these abilities, may have range distance, which is, I think, fair. <laughs> like, on the other side of a planet, be like, oh, he's missing five hit points. Five hit points for you, sir. That'd be a little overpowered. It does cost an action, so that's good. You'll note, a little Peter Manor guy. Designing the Mystic. So, this is kind of where they talk about what they wanted the Mystic to be. And it's really cool. I like this. I like this kind of, let's get in the head of the developers. And that way we can say, hey, we want the Mystic to go another way. Or we love that. Love the Vitality Network. We love the Mystic Bond. Please make that what you do going forward. Awesome. 
Lightning spells works the same as it does in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Use a spell slot. If the spell says it has a heightened effect, it does that effect. The spells, over how the spells work for the Mystic. Now they have a repertoire. A uh, collection of spells you can cast is called your spell repertoire. First level, you gain two first rank spells of your choice and four cantrips of your choice, as well as any additional spell and cantrip from your connection. Okay. Swapping spells, and then you get more spells for your level. If you gain new levels, you can swap out previously learned spells. It's good. We kind of go into spells per day graft here, and some more of the class features mental bond starting to I think strengthen that mystic bond that we talked about earlier creatures bonded by your mystic connection and communicate telepathically as long as two bonded creatures are on the same planetary body and both are alive or functional in the case of undead <laughs> they remain aware of one another's present state general direction distance from one another conditions affecting them and they themselves are also aware of for example a bonded ally unaware of a disease or a poison affecting them it means their bonded allies do not know of the disease either you gain absolute bond action for third level i feel like that might be a little powerful but that is again a really cool ability we are now expanding that mystic bond to allow everyone in the bond to be able to assess everyone else which is pretty cool third level might be a little powerful though absolute bond action concentrate your telepathy toward a bonded ally to invite them to a temporary understanding of your connection if the next action you use is to cast a spell one or more bonded allies to be affected choose one either that spell only affects one bonded target when that spell does not affect one of the bonded targets. The next action you use only affects the bonded ally and transfers or reduces hit points from your vitality network. Your vitality network regains four of those lost hit points. You are master connection, six, legendary, eight. Okay. So this is, if we look at Pathfinder lingo and we go to cleric, this is kind of a selective channeling like ability. This allows you to say, okay, I'm about to cast this cone. I'm about to cast this AOE. I have two allies. Let me real quickly say, hey guys, I'm about to cast this. And a pick whether the spell affects them or not. That's useful. That's I like that. I feel like that at third level is appropriate. They could almost just make absolute bond the third level ability and maybe the mental bond a little bit higher because having um i really like that absolute bonded ability i feel like you could replace mental bond with just absolute bond at third level and put mental bond maybe a little bit higher because i feel like having people in the bond being able who aren't the main bond creator hive mind whatever you want to call it being able to access everybody else is a little high powered for third level. That, I think that could be a good fifth level or seventh level ability. But yeah, I hold on to that. It's a little tough for third level. And we move down some signature spells, which are going to be uh, from your connection. So, so we keep moving in class features. We have signature spell. Learn to cast some of your spells more flexibly. Each spell rank you have to access, use one spell of that rank to be a signature spell. You don't need to learn heightened versions of the signature spells separately. Instead, you can heighten these spells freely. Oh, that's actually really awesome. So, depending on you know spells you're going to pick, if you use it wisely, every time you get a new spell rank, you can choose this spell to be a signature spell, and they don't cost extra to heighten pretty awesome normal skill increases interest repeat mystic 
resilience. Your physique is incredibly hardy. Your proficiency rank, fortitude to... Oh, okay. And then jumping into feats, we get a couple examples. And this can really shape what your mystic looks like. You know, right away, deity's domain. That's leaning heavily into cleric, kind of a divine space cleric. Martial disciple. In favor with deity. Weapon. Okay. Natural bond. Choose one of the following Xenodruid orders. See, now we have our first two were a little bit more of that clerical religious acolyte type. And then now we kind of change into more natural or Xenodruid. And that looks like it will change spells depending on the order. There's not a lot of information on these orders, which hopefully they expand upon. But it's, it's pretty self-explanatory right now. You know, animal, elemental, viral, plant. Network spell. Uh, the next action you use is to cast a spell with an area, range, or target. The spell manifests from one of your bonded allies you can see within 20 feet instead of yourself. Oh, that's pretty cool. So that's, you know, Joe is 20 feet from me. Maybe my spell only has a range of 30 feet. I can't quite get to him. I can use Joe, who's 20 feet away, he's part of my mystic bond, to to use as the anchor for the to cast that spell. That's pretty cool. I like that one. That's fun. That's sort of like your familiars. A lot of Pathfinder stuff where they can kind of be the conduit of power. You can use those in your mystic bond as the conduit of your power. And, you know, as so you level up, find Disciple. And again, that's pushing into that more cleric bot healing some stuff uh, you quickly expend vital energy from your vitality network botted ally as a reaction your ally regains hit points to your level reduce your vitality net remaining two plus the amount transfer so that's a good one wild bond earth level cloud storage memory bank mental interference these are of all enhancing that vitality network or that mystic bond, which I think are great. Those are very unique class features, and I think there's a lot you can do with those, depending on how powerful they want those to get. Cloud storage, I love that name. Uh, you can use your vitality network as an extra dimensional storage space. Big items into and out of thin air. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. That's funny. Uh, you carry a mental trove of memories that helps cement special bond you have with your companion. Increase your vitality network capacity with these memories or store them into a wielded item. Oh, that's cool. So either enhance your own vitality network or make a an item uh, that is effective. Something that you can draw those hit points out of. Yeah, there we go. Some great names of some of these feats. Really liking the theme again. So then we talk about our connection, which is how the mystic gains their powers. We already talked about healing and rhythm. Healing is the tuning into the tapestry of life and the life force itself. And rhythm is of listening to the cosmos. And they use it as a melody. You know, the music of the universe. And... We'll tell you the spellcasting tradition you're going to use, skills, any spells granted, and stuff like that. That's really cool. The connection to spells, along with spheres, it's 40 feet. Part of casting the spell you perform to bolster your bonded allies within 60 feet. The DC of this performance check is a standard difficulty DC of a level equal to the highest level target of your song. GM can assign it to based on circumstances. Effect depends on the result of your check. So critical success, except the effect lasts three rounds. Between your bonded allies, game one status bonus to attack rolls, damage rolls, as success. It lasts you and one selected bonded 
critical fail uh, spell is in effect. Again, we're keeping with that three action and that crit success crit failure part, which I do like. It is a lot easier, in my opinion, and more rewarding and can be more detrimental. You know, instead of just having to roll ones or twenties, just roll low, you could do a crit failure. Or if you just roll well, you have a crit success. That is definitely a more rewarding system to the player, so I enjoy that a lot. And it goes through some of the Mystic Connection stuff here into spells. And we didn't get to see any spells with the soldier. There's a lot here, so we're not going to go over every single spell, but we'll go over a couple of them. We've seen Delete in the uh, Glitch Gremlins repertoire. Let's see what it actually is. So it's two actions. Got a 30 foot range. It is targets one data set or tech item. Great. You delete data. Your handwritten, printed, or digital. You remove up to 1500 words worth of text. One page of content, one display screen worth of text, and other visual information. Non magical writing in or on any unattended or held object is automatically deleted. Attempt a counteract check to delete magic writing or digital content, digital stuff. If you fail to delete writing that is part of the hazard, you trigger the hazard. If you target an attended tech item with tracking trait, counteract check, spell casting ability modifier, plus your computer's proficiency bonus. On a success, the item becomes glitching one. The creature holding the item can spend a single action with the interact trait to restart the software, reducing the glitching value by one. Nice. I like that. That's cool. Doom scroll. <laughs> now you magically broadcast grim news onto nearby devices, screens, and other displays. Creatures in the area who can see one or more displays will attempt a will save. <laughs> That's great. I love that. So, uh, critical success. Creatures that affected. That's fascinated by the display the failure of the creature is fascinated by the display and frightened Ooh. Ooh, nice uh, well, the creature is fascinated by the display right three and doomed one Oof. that's a great I like doom scroll that's a fun one you can see a lot of uses uh, if any of you watched our junkyard hero starfinder first edition campaign Doom scroll would have been abused <laughs> by some of our characters or players. That would have been a fun one. Recharge weapon. If there was a uh, similar spell in first edition, you touch a weapon with no remaining ammunition and recharge it with magical energy. The target gains ammunition or charges equal to its usage until the end of your next turn, allowing anyone holding the target one strike with the weapon. Spell only recharge weapons that use ammunition at the cost of 10 credits or less. Always a handy one to have in your back pocket. And it's a cantrip. It's a great cantrip. And then Wisp Ally. You summon a tiny bouncing wisp of light that easily distracts determined of combatants. Wisp take up space, flanking, or have any other attributes a creature would. The wisp generates bright light in a 10 foot radius. As a spell, each time you sustain, you can direct the wisp Move to a creature you can range and attempt to distract it. They also will save against the distracting wisp. It's off guard until the end of their next the creature will save against the second wisp. In the same round, it becomes dazzled. I like that. I like that. Good little spell. Nice little crowd control. You know, asset one round, two actions. And then use an action to sustain it going forward. Always, always trying to figure out how to use three actions every round to really get the most of that three action again. Economy. Cool. And what's the Mystic? I'm excited. I like the Mystic. There's a lot of really cool things. I think that their initial overview of the Mystic. And some of the feats, some of the abilities and spells they've given 
really gives us a good idea at how the Mystic is going to be its own Starfinder second it evolves and heads towards you know, true playtest, kind of like we had with Pathfinder. I'm excited to get more of these, and these field tests have been a lot of fun so far. I enjoy the Soldier. We're seeing it a little bit in my Strange Winds campaigns on Sunday, where it's a Pathfinder 2E mixed with some of this Starfinder 2nd Edition stuff. Yeah, that is going to be a look at the Mystic class in this field test number two. I'm enjoying the direction Starfinder 2nd Edition is going. All right, geeks and gamers. Well, that is going to be a wrap on the Starfinder 2nd Edition field test number two video. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe, leave a comment on what you think in this comment section below. Also, come join the Gilded server to chat with me, other Geeks and Gamers tabletop crew, ever-growing fellowship we got over there, and even find yourself a table to play at. It's all free. Just click the link in the description below. And may all your games be guilt-free and fun. I'll talk to you later. Thank <laughs> you.